Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast, formerly the Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. We're coming at you today on January 8th, 2021. Uh, it's pretty crazy times, uh, but uh, things other than politics are happening, and some of that is COVID-related, which is also you know pretty political as well. Um, so, but before we get into any of that, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, a pilot in the state of California, not of and, the state of California, in the state of California. <laughs> and, and the birthday boy today. Yes, birthday right. boy too. Yeah, happy, birthday to <laughs> happy birthday to Tim. Happy birthday, Tim. Yeah. Let's keep yeah. our eagle happy and not screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yes. There we go. And uh, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And today we are going to focus quite a bit on COVID-related stuff. And so uh, there's been new strains uh, have been popping up, I guess, or at least a new strain. Um, I guess in the UK, that's caused some uh, pretty s- severe lockdowns. And here in California, they're talking about low hop- hospital capacity. Um, it looks like we're into some, you know, in for some more lockdowns potentially. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what do you guys think about it? Uh, you know, some, uh, 2021, another liberty crushing year uh, at the in the name of COVID. We're going to we, we're going to have to learn to live with this thing. OK. Regardless, we're going to have to learn to live with this thing because now we have this new strain. The thing is not the thing is not more deadly, but it is more transmissible according to what we know to date. We have the vaccine and so far they said it looked like the vaccine could take care of it. So I don't know why we've been locked up. Well, I don't know why we were locked down in the first case and I don't know why we're going to have further lockdown because of the new strain. I have no idea. But this is what is happening here is that our liberties and our freedoms are being destroyed in the name of COVID. Just like the election and the integrity of our elections were totally destroyed because of the quote-unquote pandemic, is the same thing is happening to our liberties and our freedoms. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something. What was it? I was listening to Leon. He's... So enjoyable to listen to. I uh, I got I figured, distracted. I figured you were I holding your breath to blow out some birthday candles or something. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Oh my god! Speaking um, of which, did you know you're not? Yeah. To, or that, that I guess they are not happy about people getting together for birthdays and even singing "Happy Birthday." That was yeah, I know, yeah. 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 save for another one, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they, they actually claim you emit more when you sing a happy birthday yeah, song. Yeah. You emit more COVID. So, so, gosh, I guess there goes the karaoke on my birthday party. Huh? That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, cover, cover your mouth. Cover your mouth and sing happy yeah. birthday to you. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, this whole extra strand or strain. I'm sure. Sh- oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm surprised that they're even talking about this already, knowing Joe Biden has won the presidency. And all, we all know that when the Democrats are in the president, you know, especially when they control the entire federal government, um, we all know that. Uh, the, the the grass is greener, sky is bluer, puppies' tails wag faster. So we, um, I'm very surprised that they even mentioned this thing uh, with yeah. with Joe Biden there. But uh, mention it, they already have. So I, I'm assuming that um, Joe Biden will come out with a, a hundred day mask mandate, like he's already come out with that. So I didn't think that up. So he's going to come out with something and um, declare victory after a certain length of time. And then, you know, we'll go back to, uh, you know, that's my prediction again, along with the hundred dollar loaf of bread. And so, <laughs> so <laughs> notice how it, it was cut in 50% with just one little pushback from Leon. Just one little question. That's all he asked. He just asked a question. Look at it. I mean, I thought I was steadfast in my opinions. Apparently not. Apparently not. 
<laughs> well, you, you know, you know what's funny about the aside from aside from what you just said, and it has Leon rolling over. <laughs> on the side. But you know what else is funny <laughs> about all this? But you know, they they're they're literally it's it's you know we've heard this saying before, but why let you know we don't let a tragedy or a, a catastrophe or any of that go to waste. Don't don't let a crisis go to waste. Don't let a crisis go to waste. And yes, and I mean you know that certainly helped them to get into power with changing some of the election you know rules uh, unconstitutionally in a lot of places, just sort of yes. by executive fiat. Yes. But um, you know now that they're in control, you have gotta wonder, holy crap why let a good crisis go to waste if it worked to get them in then you know uh you know hey if they're after socialism you know the, the, the we know the end result is equality and poverty for almost everybody everybody yeah. but the leaders the leaders yeah. the, <laughs> usually get a bigger yeah. slice of the pie but but everybody else it's <laughs> it's equality and poverty but you know they don't even have to promise people a chicken in every pot like they do in a lot of places. They just say safety and scream COVID, and before yes. you know it, we've lost everything. <laughs> oh well, well, it's, we can yeah. squawk all we want as libertarians, but in the end, you know, people get what they deserve. So, unfortunately, we're getting what they deserve as well. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, it was Benjamin. It was Benjamin Franklin who said. Here it is, a republic if we could keep it. Yeah. Yeah. And we are at a point where we are not sure that we can. Okay, yeah. really and truly. When you look at yeah. what's going on right now, the lawlessness and everything else. And all the and, and Jason, you're absolutely correct. In about six of the con, uh, six of the contested states, there were unconstitutional changes made, and this is how people voted. Now I would have thought the courts would have done something about that, but they did not. They did not. Yeah. Pennsylvania is the most blatant example of this, but the yeah. courts allowed it. Boy, aren't we a bowl of cherries today? <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, I'm not really shedding tears, though, for the Republicans so much as I'm shedding tears for the potential loss of gridlock. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, after all, you know, the the Republicans did quite a number on Ron Paul when he ran, <laughs> so yeah, true. changing all the rules at the last minute and everything. So, um, well, you know, you guys know I'm a small, I'm a small, uh, small L libertarian. I consider myself a conservatarian. So, so I have, I, I do have um, some sympathies for the Republicans. I do. I, I have to admit it, even though I, I have had my disagreements with with Donald Trump. But what the things that happened in this in, in in the November 3rd election to me is so blatant and so obvious that I can't understand why the Democrats are getting away with it. I just don't understand it. I truly don't. I mean, in one case in Georgia, we have the fraud on video. Yeah. Seriously, well, on video. It's not to say like on. this was a year when CNN would show us uh, you know, burning buildings and say you have a reporter standing there saying, well, this is mostly peaceful protesting while it looks yeah, like no a, a war zone. Behind them. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's not surprising that, you know, you could literally be dragging boxes of ballots out from under tables after uh, well, poll watchers were literally told to leave. Because, and then the voting, you know, counting gets going again, right after all the poll watchers leave. I, you know, it's, it's uh, it's hard to, and I, I, that didn't necessarily happen everywhere, but you know, at least it did. Everybody saw it happen in Georgia, anyways. So, so, so I guess mostly I should be satisfied because it was a mostly clean election. <laughs> I <don't laughs> be satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Yes. except for ten or twenty thousand votes here or there. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, why the hell should I complain, right? <laughs> Well, when I, you know, maybe uh, when I pay, well, I, I wish I could pay. Instead, it's drawn out of my check uh, prior to me even getting it. But if I could pay taxes, and then I would just maybe send only like 60% of my tax uh, tax that I uh, that I owed. And then I with a note saying, well, th this is mostly all my taxes. So, you know, it's 60%. <laughs> So you should be satisfied, right? Yeah, of course. Oh. Of course. Never mind Speaking. that missing yes. forty yes. percent. Good luck. Good luck with that, Tim. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. 
Well, speaking of, I take it out of my check, or else something <laughs> bad might happen to me. Yes. <laughs> speaking of conspicuous counting, um, you know, some people are starting to have some doubts uh, about some of these COVID counts, and in yes. in Minnesota, uh, they've actually gone and done some auditing mm -hmm. and about the way that they're actually counting some of these COVID deaths, and I believe they've had about twenty eight hundred COVID deaths, I think, in uh, Minnesota, uh, yeah. I think it's the number. And um, they, they realized that about 800 of these weren't, did not have the underlying cause of, of COVID. It was just like somebody had COVID, they fell off a ladder, or they literally were thrown from a moving car. <laughs> so, there, there's uh, quite a few odd instances, but they, they've, they've gone back and they've done some counting, and they found out that of a sample of 2,800 deaths, 800 now they're figuring were an error, which is, uh, uh, gosh, that's an error rate of, I guess, 28 uh, percent that um, wow. you know that they're off. Yeah, so almost it, a third. Yeah. Well, yeah. but th this really brings up a, a, a big question is what is the metric? And I think uh, most people just assume everybody counts the same. And and that's one of the things I think we've struggled with since the beginning of this is that people all over the world have different standards of how they uh, mark off these these deaths as whether they're COVID or not. And so, you know, the the numbers, when people say science, it's it's really, you know, you, you have to have that repeatable metric in order to really have good observations for science. So. You know. you know, what was James telling us about Singapore? He said, James said that if we counted our COVID deaths as Singapore does, we will only have 90,000 deaths as compared to the 300, I think, 50 or 360 that we, we now do. Oh, and just, just for the audience's sake, James is our illustrious uh, director, producer, yes. James, just, yes. uh, uh, you know, and ho uh, he's also the, uh, uh, the, chair of the Sacramento County Libertarian Party. So just giving a nice plug to him. <laughs> but, he's, uh, kind, you know. he's kind of our unpaid boss. <laughs> <laughs> we're his unpaid employee. We're, yeah, we're his exactly, equally unpaid employees. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You know. but, uh, but, you know, but, you know, this, um, this whole thing about counting the um, COVID deaths, this nonsense started acting with the task force. Well, I mean, the task force, I think, did some good work in terms of trying to manage this pandemic thing. But Dr. Bricks, I think, Deborah Bricks, I think, was her name. In the early of the part of the pandemic, she said, we're going to take a very oh. liberal view of counting COVID deaths. So what happened is that people who die with COVID is being counted as being dead because of COVID. And those are two very, very different things. This is situation in Minnesota that you just raised, Jason, is not the first time we had this issue being raised. Colorado had a similar issue. I think their numbers turned out to be like 23%. Um, this was earlier in, in, in the pandemic. They were like 23% off <clears throat> because of the same kind of thing. They went back, they audited, they found out that there are people who died with the COVID, but the cause of death was probably a motorbike accident or some other kind of accident or whatever it was. I don't remember all the details about it. But the point, the fact of the matter is what they are counting of COVID deaths are inflated. Okay, I am seriously, and I think I've said this on this show before, that these numbers are not right. Sure, they are, people are being infected at whatever rate they are being infected. But these numbers that they're telling us are COVID deaths are not COVID deaths. And this is this number is way out of proportion. Well, so I, I did a little quick calculation based on 350,000 deaths in the United States. If, for example, those deaths were inflated by 25%, their true number would be 262,500. And that's significant. Uh, which is significant uh, yes. for the for the argument, and you know we we have we have to have the truth. That's I think what I lament more than anything else in all that's going on now and in the past uh, number of years. I mean, it's been going on for so long, and that is the um, death of the truth in yes. uh, our uh, 
discourse among amongst ourselves about you know how to how to handle things that come up and and uh, you know challenges that that uh, that affect societies and so on it's just this this uh, and, and I don't know if it's because of the over politicized political politicalization of of uh, of everything if that's the reason why the truth has died but the truth is dead i mean in this country and probably the world too far as that goes it's it's uh, driven by these echo chambers but you know what speaking of another uh, these crazy echo chambers and the way they're dealing with covid uh, in san francisco uh, what I consider to be, um, I guess, Mayor London Breed, I consider to be racist, sexist London Breed, uh, is essentially doling out assistance to businesses that they have shut down in San Francisco and uh, essentially harmed with their actions. So she's doling out assistance based upon your ethnicity and, I believe, sex, too. But uh, they're literally handing out loans to business and other things, and they're you know, essentially uh, doing that based upon, you know, whether or not you're a minority owned business or I believe also, uh, you know, uh, sex plays a role in that as well. And, I, you know, I just it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, your your business is shut down, you know, and then, you know, of adding insult to injury, you go to the government for help afterwards and they tell and then they check your skin color or your gender or sex to, to figure out whether or not they're going to help you, you know, and I just I, it, you know, it seems like to me there's a, there's a lot more sickness going on than just COVID with some of these people. <laughs> well, this, this, this sickness, this sickness, has been going on for a long time. These people think this damn nonsense is going to take us to this racial utopia where everybody is equal and everybody love each other. These people are always trying to save somebody, in particular, trying to save people who have a hue that looks like me. Like you know what? We are not all human beings. You know, we are not equal before God. We are not equal before the law. They're going to decide what, who, which human being is better than which human being and what benefits should be given because you have the right hue. It is true in our past in this, in this America, we did do that. We did have Jim Crow. We did have slavery. But for God's sake, that ended a long time ago. Please stop this damn nonsense. No, and I, I thought that the cure and the lesson was given by Martin Luther King and, uh, you know, asking us to judge ourselves as individuals by the content of our character, you know, not to be, you know, the socialist message of looking at each other as part of some group or a team based upon some ridiculous characteristics that, you know, are, are quite frankly, have nothing to do with what you as an individual have, have earned or your growth or anything like that. So it's, it is what, exactly. That, and you, you're absolutely right. That's what's going on. It is, it is not, it is not the, the, the condition of your competence that matters. It's not the content of your character that matters. It is not the color of your conduct that matters. It's just the color of your skin. That's all. That's all that matters. Or your gender, I guess, in, 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 in this particular example. It's your gender. And these people, and, and I said this before, these people are the same people who tell us we should embrace the message of Dr. King. We should always embrace it. And yet then they go out and they make judgments based on skin color. Not competence, not conduct, not, not, not any of those things that really matter. Not character, not those things. Just the color of your skin. As if that tells you anything. I don't know what the hell my skin color tell you guys. And I don't care. Judge my words. Well, yeah. you two guys have obviously lost the <laughs> focus here and the reason behind this. Everyone knows that the, the, the white male business owners of San Francisco have a massive support network of family and friends to fall back on that are quite ready, willing, and able to uh, send them checks of their own to to uh, keep that white male business owner in cereal and popcorn for as long as he wants. And you guys just don't get it. So they're just doing this uh, in in a way of making up for the lack of of support uh, with uh, female and 
uh, business owners of color. So that's it. I mean, it's just that it. I mean, what else could it be? And well, so um, I, you I, you I, are certainly woke. You ate your wokeos today. <laughs> today's 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 a good day. So yeah. you got to woke today. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, that brings up the 14th Amendment and equal protection under the law. And I guess if there is a law that allows some uh, bureaucrat or you know, some uh, so-called community leader of like a mayor to, uh, if there's a, a law, I don't, I don't know if there is, but I'm, I'm certain the mayor is not doling this money out, out of his own pocket. I'm assuming that he's taking this out of the coffers of the, of the San Francisco city government, and he's doling these checks out. It's a know, woman. According... It's a woman. Oh, oh it's a woman. Oh, yeah. yeah. I beg your pardon. Okay. So he's uh, she is uh, Dolan. Well, right actually, now. we should check her pronouns first. Or I, <laughs> oh, I, I right. just did it. I, I messed up. I didn't that's check. Right. We should check their pronouns. She, yes, <laughs> the ones. And Tim, and Tim obviously did not get enough work. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean because this uh, this mayor to, to to try not to use a pronoun. This mayor. May may have a different opinion about what pronoun to use. So yeah, um, so if, if equal protection allows this mayor to dole out this money, uh, which I'm not sure that there is a law that allows this mayor to dole out money to whoever she wants. I'm not sure. Um, maybe there is, uh, but you would think the Fourteenth Amendment would make it a, a requirement that the uh, that the skin color and sex does not enter into the need for this uh, bailout money. Not that I'm a, I'm not for bailout money to begin with. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Just don't shut businesses down. Maybe that's exactly. an uh, option. Exactly. There. Just stop, exactly. you know, stop this, 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 you know, this tyranny, uh, this what? despotism. Certainly don't shut the business down, at least when Nancy Pelosi wants to show up and use it. Yeah. <laughs> Let it be open, at least for that moment. Keep everybody else out. Right. And, you know, <laughs> but, yep. but, you know, but obviously, you know, what's going on here. Right. You know, this is our second insight about this matter. They're going to punish you guys for your white privilege. That's what they're going to do. You guys are that right. wonderful white privilege you have that have gotten you so far. And of course, being male and being part of the, the male patriarchy, of course, they need to punish you for that. And that's what they're going to do. And they're going to punish you for, uh, for all eternity that you guys going to be criminals and people who look like me with the right hue color, the right hue, we're going to be victims. And they're going to save it, us. And in, in 200 years, is it going to switch back the other way? And then all the black people are going... Okay, now all the white people are decimated. They're all impoverished. They've had nothing for the last 150 years. It took 50 years to take it all away. Now you black people are going to have to pay compensation to the white people. <laughs> Is that what's going to be in 200 years? It's, it's, oh, it's, we'll, we'll have reparations then. We'll have reparations yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is a forever employment for government because they'll have to obviously exactly. be the person handling the reparations. So exactly, yeah. they can have perpetual reparations going one way or the other. That's <laughs> Anybody very... from A to C, as long as they're B, they're in business. Yeah. That's a good point because we all know that we can't lead ourselves. We have to be led by the leaders. Yes. All yes. Know. Yes. We can't think for ourselves. That's that's impossible. No. Well, chaos chaos would ensue if we did. Yeah, well, just, of course, of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just go to your average roller rink, uh, skating rink, or if there is one anymore, probably not. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, the chaos that ensues. Oh, I'm being well, that. I'm that being, was uh, the sound of our time for our knucklehead noise patrol. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to it this it. time. We didn't make it to the, oh, you didn't hear it. Oh. No, we didn't. We didn't. Let's hear it again. Well, I, I was think wondering what you're talking about. Did you oh, hear yeah, that? Bro. Okay, yeah, there bro. we go. <laughs> okay, our knucklehead oh, noise control. Oh, so this time... <laughs> We are making it to the Knucklehead Noise Patrol, and it is a COVID-related Knucklehead Noise Patrol this time. And of all the crazy things, uh, it even ties in Washington, D.C., which is another crazy tie into all this. But uh, so apparently, uh, D.C. Mayor uh, Muriel 
Bowser, uh, I guess before around Christmas time, um, decided to canonize Fauci, uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, oh, yeah. um, you know, sort of our, our um, patron saint. Our patron saint of, patron, of COVID patron. panic. <laughs> 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 you know, hide for, for a year, put your head under your pillow, and you'll be yeah. safe. But, uh, <laughs> but to honor him, apparently Christmas Eve is his birthday. And so to honor uh, Dr. Fauci on his 80th birthday, um, they decided to proclaim that Dr. Fauci Day, it's going to be Dr. Anthony S. Fauci Day in Washington, D.C. So, <laughs> nice, nice. Now, now remember, this uh, Dr. Fauci, he's the guy who uh, at the beginning of this told us not to wear masks, yeah. and then he told us he was lying. He, he said, oh, well, yeah, yeah you should have worn masks, but I didn't want yeah. you to buy them all up so our doctors couldn't get them. And then he recently said that on the metric side that, you know, herd immunity was about uh, he was saying around 70% or so. And then yes. when he heard that the public was more amenable to taking the vaccine, he just to say, you know, herd immunity is actually around 80%. <laughs> just, not, just because he thought more people would take it, you know, now. So, <laughs> and and this to do is, with the actual science. So that's right. And this is the same, this is the same saint that we found watching a baseball game with about two or three people in close proximity without a mask. This was the same saint we found here. Okay. Yeah. Please remember that. This is yeah. Dr. Fauci God. I, I don't know what's wrong with these people if you want the truth. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, like I say, it's the vic the victim is the truth in, in all these yeah. things. And uh yeah, here's another guy being uh, honored and knighted or sainted for be you know, for basically telling a bunch of fabricated lies and you know, but uh, one thing I, I have to on because it's my birthday and uh, today I'm, you know, I'm getting up there. So, uh, I'm happy that somebody who's that old is still, uh, making waves because we all know that if you ain't making waves, you ain't paddling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he may be making waves, but at that baseball game, I don't think he was able to get the ball to the plate. So, <laughs> they let him throw out the first pitch. Okay. Yeah. How did he do? Did he? I, I don't think he even made it to the plate. <laughs> he did not. He did. He did not. The the, um, yeah. the the catcher had to come come from behind the plate to, to pick up the ball about halfway. Halfway. <laughs> Halfway between. Oh my God! Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, among, he's even more off target with his arm than he is with his <laughs> medical protection. <Yeah. laughs> well, now I'm going to have to go get a baseball and go see how far I can throw it. You know, <laughs> measure out measure out the distance between the the pitcher's mound and the home plate and see if I can make it myself. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us, and we'll find out how Tim did with his throw. <laughs> Yeah, no, you no, won't. You have to let us know. <laughs> but uh, you can catch more of our shows on libertariancounterpoint.com, Facebook Libertarian Counterpoint, or uh, um, uh, Public Access in Sacramento. Thanks so much for joining us, and we hope to see you at the next one. Bye, guys. Oh. Oh, we got an overtime. Uh, okay, well, let's see. We have a, a message from our friend in uh, uh, in Africa. So, uh, uh, Ms. Sweji Joram in Jojo, you must be uh, shading off tears because your liberty is being Shutting buried up. down each day. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you guys want to take that one on? Because uh, yes, we are. Well, all I, think, I, think, well, I think, yes. I do. mean, may, may, the... It's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I think that our friend is is absolutely correct. That um, our tears are becoming more and more because we are losing our liberties. We are losing our freedoms. And what what is really driving this, unfortunately, is the media that is telling us what we should accept. Is the media is telling us how good and wonderful this utopia that they have out there for us. While they stab our liberties and kill it, they are telling us that all these lawlessness that we are seeing is good. Don't worry about it. We'll get it all straightened out when we get to utopia. But utopia will never come. We know that. The only thing the utopia brings is misery. And the misery is come comes at the death of our liberty. That is what is happening here. So Mr. 
King Jojo is absolutely right. We are shedding tears and we should be shedding a lot more. Yeah, it says another comment. Yes, break election rules in Uganda today, bending the constitution. Yes, uh, you know, maybe that's something we've got to look into, uh, uh, you know, as some of the uh, liberty issues around the world, because it sounds like things aren't so great in Uganda for uh, Ken Jojo. I know there's certainly, uh, you know, it's funny. Once you discover liberty, uh, you know, it, it, the world, especially election days, become a lot bleaker because <laughs> you, your, yeah. your, your side that's for liberty almost never wins. It's almost always people who want more government who seem to win every time. So it's uh, it's always a little disappointing. But, you know, at least, you know, it's, it's uh, who is it? Uh, is it uh, uh, Mills, I think, who said, you know, is it better to be Socrates satisfied or the pig satisfied or, or Socrates dissatisfied? or the pig satisfied. And, and, uh, you know, I, I think we just have to take it with, you know, a little bit of truth that, you know, once you kind of discover some of these things about Liberty and, and, um, you know, some of these principles of markets, uh, you start to realize how these things really work and, and, you know, it's kind of upsetting, but at least we, we kind of know what the truth is and we can start paddling in that direction. So. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Bonadine Mansegi. Happy birthday. Ah. Thank you. Thank well, you. let me stop you. It's Bonadine Mansegi. Trivia, trivia, she's oh. my sister. Ah, oh. okay. Well, thank you. So. All right. All right. Wow. <laughs> New listener. All right, then. That's, 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 uh, quite, that's quite an honor. I appreciate that. And uh, I was about to say, uh, to tag on to what Jason was talking about, to look at the glass half full at the, um, you know, at, the, at this flip side of, of all this, uh, this uh, s stuff going on with uh, damaging uh, the tree of liberty. And um, because we have this show and the internet in itself, uh, the Mises um, uh, website, uh, Cato and uh, any number of libertarian websites, we are able to share the uh, the idea of liberty. And and like Ron Paul used to always, it still says, uh, you know, nothing uh, can beat an idea, but you know, whose time has come. And uh, so I look uh, forward to increasing amounts of. Um, people that know about liberty and once and who learn about these ideas that Jason mentioned uh, just now in that I think that is uh, something to celebrate. And so uh, sure governments uh, and the, the more pushback government gets, the more they're going to push harder toward despotism. Uh, but eventually, <clears throat> you know, you keep squeezing, and, and they're watching their their uh, income of uh, revenues from taxes dwindling all, all the time, and uh, because because of what they're doing, they're shutting their own economies down and and killing off businesses and and really crippling total industry entire industries. So uh, when they watch their um, their income dwindle away, uh, and you know, I know they want the federal reserve to print more money and, and give it to them. And, and it, that'll happen, you know, not without repercussions. Uh, I, I still say in spite of my, um, my amazement that it continues on this long without a, uh, a monetary, um, uh, complete collapse of the monetary system. But, um, anyway, uh, there's going to come a day when we're going to say, we told you so. And that day is going to be the same day that you pay a hundred dollars for a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a big irony here. You know, you know, the, the, the people that who is supposed to be safeguarding our quote unquote liberties, safeguarding our, our freedoms are the people who work for the government and the government are the people who want to expand government. Okay. These are the bureaucrats. Like, you know, these bureaucrats who are supposed to be holding up the say the integrity of our elections, say, for instance. Well, the elections are really one expression of our liberties, okay? We are free to vote, okay? These people who are supposed to be holding up the integrity of those elections. They want more government. And more government means less liberty, less freedom. 
And these are the people who is going to hold up our in, the integrity of our elections. But you are right. Liberty never wins. It never wins unless government is properly constrained. The role of government is properly defined and properly constrained. Liberty will never win. That's why we got to do something quick in this country. We really have to. Otherwise, we're going to continue to lose our liberties. And one day, we'll be telling our grandchildren about a place that used to be called America where men were free. Well, women too. Sorry. Men were free. We'll be, tell we'll be talking about that, about that place that we used to know called America. Well, the sad thing is, you know, when, when America was founded, you know, the government was a really small footprint on the, uh, exactly. on the economy and on the people's uh, liberties and such. And, and it's grown quite a bit. And I think what most people just don't realize is that as government grows, it, it concentrates power and concentrated power draws concentrated interests. And those concentrated interests, the more complicated government gets because it gets bigger and it's trying to do more things, those concentrated interests then become the ones steering the show because we can't, you know, we can't see what they're doing. And that's why the tax code's so massive because, you know, everybody's in there trying to steer it their way. But, you know, one of the things we're going to try and do over the next year with our show is we're going to add another segment to it um, where we try, each of us will take turns with some source uh, of uh, liberty somewhere, you know, a uh, repository, you know, things like, uh, you know, free to choose network or Mises or something like that. And just to let people know what's out there and the things that we enjoy listening mm -hmm. to and, and help us to, to, you know, sort of develop some of the knowledge we've gotten uh, to help other people because, you know, some of you guys are in different parts of the world and, you know, I see uh, 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 Key and Jojo, uh, his, uh, uh, icon was Milton Friedman. So, I mean, I know he's got to be aware of some of these things, you know, uh, but, uh, um, you know, maybe some people, you know, aren't as aware of some of these sources. So we're going to try and share some of these ideas and, uh, <laughs> you know, and that, I think that's all we can do is, is try and spread good sources yeah. of knowledge and hopefully, you know, that'll turn a light on for people. Cause I know for me, it was free to choose that kind of turned the light bulb on for me. So. All righty. Yes, we, we, we must promote liberty in, in, in as much as we can, without a doubt. It was given by God, but not by any government. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, and uh, we'll hope to see you on the next show. And by the way, uh, we do have uh, uh, you know that uh, email for comments, and if you have some story of how you've been impacted this last year by COVID, wherever you are in the world, um, and or if you've uh, you know had government... Um, you know, stepping on your rights or something like that, you know, shutting down your business. We'd love to hear about it. So, uh, you know, shoot us, uh, you know, message on it and maybe we can have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you at the next one.